Hey, here we are at uh, the Women's March. This is Pittsburgh's Sister March. Uh, in D.C., we have over 200,000 people attending, as well as sister marches across the country. Uh, we're joined by thousands of individuals who are here in the name of peace, tolerance, love, respect. Um, right now, we're joined by Mari. Uh, she's uh, the Teacher of the Year this year. 2015 Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year. I'm very proud to be so. So do me a favor, introduce what's happening here today and tell me a little bit about what got you involved. So today we're at the Women's March. This is a sister march to the one that's in Washington, D.C., which is incredibly crowded, as is this one. And I'm thrilled to see all these people coming together from many, many, many walks of life to be here to support love and respect. Question, what is that you're wearing on your head? Uh, the thing on my head is actually called a pussy hat, and it's what people, if you look around, it's what everybody is wearing or many people are wearing, and my dear friend Mary Ruth made this for me. Uh, speaking of women, Secretary of Education, tell me a little bit about Betsy DeVos, uh, what she means for education going forward. Secretary-elect DeVos, if she is nominated, is going to be, a, well, she's nominated, if she is approved, is going to be actually a backward step for education, in my opinion. Um, her position is difficult because she doesn't have any actual experience in education, and she doesn't have experience running any kind of administrative position. So there are issues with her just simply from the standpoint of the job that's at hand. Her Senate hearings were um, a very unsettling for teachers as she had struggled to answer some of the questions that we find very basic about student growth versus student proficiency. Um, and so I think that she's a, a very difficult person for teachers to get behind and troubling um, for those of us who are in public education who want to ensure that every single child gets an a quality education. Speaking of quality education and education in general, do you think the reason that we're all here today has something to do with a failure in education nationwide? I don't think that education is failing nationwide. I think that actually education is being asked to pick up a lot of the pieces of issues that are larger in our society. And I think that our teachers go to work every day fighting against that. And I, I really truly believe that that narrative is dangerous for our country and dangerous for our democracy. Betsy DeVos, charter schools bringing religion back into the schools. What does that mean uh, going forward, assuming she's confirmed? Um, I mean, charter schools are here to stay, and charter schools that are good charter schools are fantastic. Whatever gives us quality education is really important. However, there has to be an, an equal playing field for accountability and equal access for our students to get into those schools. And I think that we're probably looking in public education at a mix of those, which is fantastic as long as it's what our students get. Because after all, that's really what this is about. It's not about me as a teacher or about my colleagues. It's about our kids. All right, last question. This event today, uh, the community that we see here, uh, what do you think this means, uh, this grassroots effort uh, going forward, uh, the community that we might be able to get from it and, and, and how we can build from this? Uh, what does this mean to you? Where might this go? I think that when we have peaceful gatherings of community, there is absolutely nothing that can be bad in that. And I think that we need more of this because we are the united, not the divided states of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Women for keeping the Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, so they want to repeal and replace, but there's no real plan for replacement. Tell me a little bit about that. They don't have anything to replace it. There are millions of people who have health insurance. They're going to lose it if they take it away, and they have nothing to replace it. So fix it, don't replace. Uh, so this goes to the question of whether uh, President Donald Trump will be able to come through with all of his commitments that he made during the executive order today or yesterday to start uh, stripping the ACA and we need to stop it. He made a commitment that nobody was going to lose their insurance, that everybody would have insurance. Is this going to be a fight between him and House Republicans that want to see the Affordable Health Care Act repealed? Hopefully we will talk to our representatives and Republicans won't have a choice but to keep it. Because there's a lot of conservatives, especially in Bible Belt states, that really like their health care. Exactly. And people don't even realize that they're on the ACA. They think they're on Obamacare, and it's the same thing. Uh, connect uh, health care to women's rights, human rights in general. Well, part of the plan to strip the ACA is also to defund parenthood. And women get a lot of their services from Planned Parenthood. So when you're doing that, you're taking away women's health care. Uh, why we have that. <laughs>
my body, my choice, my rights. Uh, there's a Republican theme, a conservative theme that uh, Planned Parenthood kills babies, they uh, abort babies. What do you think about the argument that having an institution like Planned Parenthood actually prevents abortions, actually uh, family planning is better in the long term? I completely agree with that. I mean, birth control prevents pregnancy, which prevents abortions. If you want to stop abortions, let Planned Parenthood get people pregnancy uh, prevention. Uh, so tell me a little bit about why you're here today and why you think everyone else is here and what this means going forward. Um, I hope this means that we're organized and then we're all going to be contacting our representatives and putting pressure on them to do what we want and not what a few people want. Thank you very much. No Are you here, sir, in support of the Women's March? I am. Uh, tell me a little bit about the American flag uh, and uh, what it means. Why, why, why are you uh, flying the American flag today? It's America. What does that mean? What is America? God bless America. America is everybody. America is everybody. Everybody here, women included. Everyone. Thank you very much. Anything to say about why you're here today and what you hope to accomplish from this? I just want to come out and support the women of this country and stand up for American human rights. Well, thank you, sir. Pittsburgh's Women's March, Why We March for Our Daughters. Hey, can I see your sign? Women's rights are human rights. Hashtag for our daughters, for equity, for people with disabilities, for racial justice, for all people. Inclusion, tolerance, peace, love, respect. Girls just want to have fundamental rights. I like that. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you guys are scared of. I think we're terrified um, of losing reproductive rights mainly. Um, Hold on, really quick question. Do you think it's true that Donald Trump is a piss baby? Tell me about Donald Trump being a piss baby. Honestly, I don't know if it's true or not. This is just but you know because what matters? he hates it. That's he exactly hates right. how much we know he likes piss. Is it hard to imagine that Donald might have done something like that? Yeah. No. Not at all. <laughs> Do you think Donald Trump deep down respects women? No, I don't. Not at all. No. You think there was a lot of truth in that statement he made to, was it Billy Bush? Absolutely. Yeah. You can Absolutely. see it every single time, every interaction that he has with women. He treats them as objects. Uh, tell me a little bit about what, uh, why you guys are here today and what this means for Pittsburgh and for the country going forward all, with all the sister state uh, women's marches that we have. I think it's really important that women stand together for their rights because, I mean, look at what the GOP is doing already. They're trying to roll back Planned Parenthood. They're trying to roll back protections for um, basic, you know, um, affordable birth control you know like those are basic things that women need and you know I think that equal pay um, equal protections under the law I think that those things are probably going to go away if we don't stand together and demand justice and equality for all of us and the LGBT community needs to know that he stands with us and we don't have that uh, what what do you think about the fact that on day one yesterday they already removed the entire LGBT segment from the WhiteHouse.gov website? Well, honestly, I understand that um, that they're going to remove a lot of Obama's stuff off the website, so it may have been a part of that, just like realistically speaking. But I do want to see a statement from him. Just you know, we need that reassurance as a community. Awesome. Thank you so much for your answers, guys. Protect and respect. Hear our voices. I like the the ears. Tell me about the ears and the outfit. We're not crafty, we don't knit, so we are wearing our pussy ears. <laughs> pussy ears? Yes. So I saw the pussy hats, I didn't know about the pussy ears. Well, when you don't knit, you get pussy ears. <laughs> are you worried someone might grab you by your pussy ears? <laughs> we grab back. <laughs> That's good. Women belong, tell me about uh, how representative women are in Congress and in the government. Not enough, not enough. What does it mean? Young ones get out there. Get out there and think about it now and it's a, it's a very honorable career. Do you feel like if more women were in positions of power, we'd have less trouble? Absolutely. Testosterone is a little bit of an issue sometimes. Maybe a little less war? A little less war. That's it. Uh, anything else to tell us about today? Where's your pussy hat? Uh, I don't have one. That's what I was told those hats are over there. Yes. People have been making them. I, yes. My husband, sorry you didn't have anything pink. That's nice of you making it out today. Are you here in support of uh, women across the country? I'm in support of this country. This country in general? This country in general. And Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.
All right, moving forward. Our bodies, our minds, our power. I am here for you. What do you mean you are here for, for you? I think everybody just needs a lot of support right now, so I'm here for everybody. You're here for me. Here for you. If you need to talk, if you need a hug. <laughs> oh I'll take a quick hug. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's really nice. I think that has a lot to do with what this march is about, right? People here showing support. Solidarity. Sorry. Solidarity. Solidarity. Thank you very much. Tell me about Pittsburgh being an immigrant town. Well, I mean, history has a long and proud tradition. I hope we become a sanctuary city soon. I know that's in the works. We're really proud. This city was made by immigrants, and we need to continue to be a, a society that is open to, to immigration, and we're really frightened about Trump's position on immigration and so many other issues, as you can see as you look around. Why in this country, with all the actual problems that we have, do you think the uh, election rhetoric of running against immigration of uh, deporting millions of people. Why was that so successful? Well, I, I mean, I think we have to look more deeply. I totally understand that a lot of middle class and working class folks who've seen their jobs, you know, uh, go abroad um, have a lot of frustration. And I think, you know, the Democratic Party should have done a better job speaking to alternatives um, in terms of employment and opportunities. So there's a lot of work to do. It's not that simple. Um, but I feel like this was an example of Trump speaking to the lowest possible denominator um, of so many voters and let's you know he's going into the presidency with a 32 percent approval rating what does that tell you i think it says a lot thank you very thank much you. we don't want your tiny hands anywhere near our underpants yes. it was a fiona apple chant that she released a few days ago and um yeah it's been playing in my head for the past few days do you think a lot of Trump's personality has to do with compensating for his tiny hands? Um, I think that that may be it, but I think even more that he um, he triggers so many women, and um, I think that he's so aggressive, and it that should never be the sign of a leader. That's not the sign of a true leader. He's like Mark Antony rabble rousing the crowd in Julius Caesar. Did you watch the inauguration yesterday? I did not. I was, I'm a teacher. I was grading papers all day, and I couldn't bring myself to it. As a teacher, what do you think of Betsy DeVos? Um, I think that she has not worked in a public school system, and I don't think that she will be an effective leader. Um, she wants to monetize schools and privatize them, and that's not the best way to educate our youth. Do you think religion belongs in the schools? I think that everybody's religion belongs wherever they need it to be, um, but I think that everybody needs to be represented equally. It should not be a motivating factor. That's a good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna get this. The liberty of the press is essential to the security of the state. John Adams, the First Amendment. What can you tell me about Trump and his relationship to the media? I don't think Donald Trump should be the one who's determining what the fake news is. Okay, so uh, did you see him call out CNN as being fake news? That was more the, less the inspiration for this sign. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. So uh, it says that we need to stand up for ourselves right now. Yes. Uh, this right now is women standing up for themselves, would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. I'm surprised at the number of women that actually showed up. Uh, going forward, how do we continue to stand up for ourselves? More, more marches like this, more community, more involvement? Uh, yes, absolutely. And we need to make sure that, the, um, that we're listened to and that we're not just going to sit down and that we're not going to take a back seat. What do you think uh, about the fact that Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump by almost three million votes? I think she should be our president right now. The popular vote should control? Yes, I do. I think we have a little bit of an antiquated system and something we need to take a look at. More importantly, what do you think about the fact that almost 100 million Americans didn't even bother to go out and vote in the first place? You know, if you don't vote, then you can't complain. Uh, in the uh, uh, midterms coming up, uh, do you think there's going to be a strong turnout? We'll see. I don't really have much to say about that. 2018 is a long time from now, though. Yes, it is. It sure is. It's, it, it is a long time. Unfortunately, it's a very long time. But maybe things will happen in between now and then, and things could change. Are you here with anybody today? Yes, my friend. We came from Zoe and Harmony, so we had a little bit of a drive-in. How long was your commute? Uh, I came from Butler about an hour and ten minutes. Thank, but thank you guys for making it out today. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, tell me a little bit about your hat right now. My hat? Oh, I'm a Princess Anna General today. Okay. Tell me a little bit about hope and what it means for this march and for people going forward. 
Well, we're out here because we believe in hope. We're out here because we believe our voices can be heard. So. Tell me about the princess mentality. What does it mean? Rise up. Rise up, it means have your voice heard. Stand up for what you believe in, stand up for others, and speak for those who don't have a voice. Smash the patriarchy. It's here, it's in place, it's uh, ancient. What, how, are we in the process of smashing it? I hope so. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Anything else about what brought you out today? I believe that love trumps hate. So I believe that we can rise up and we can have our voices heard in a peaceful way. Thank you, and thank you for your awesome hat. What do you think of the pussy hats today people are wearing? I think they're amazing, and I love that they're handmade. So. Oh, I didn't know that they're handmade. Most of them are. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Tell me about your rights and what it means that they're not negotiable. Well, they're not just mine, they're everybody's. Um, but, you know, uh, it's important that we don't compromise. It's not uh, something that can be traded for a vote in the Senate. Um, what rights in particular? You know, uh, reproductive rights, um, pay gap rights, racial rights, uh, police injustice, um, uh, all of them here. I mean, look at all the signs. What, what does Trump's presidency mean for all of these causes people have been advancing for the last 18 years, for the last 100 years? I feel like it's a real step backwards. It's very scary, um, not to mention, you know, issues he has in um, ethics. Uh, that's a real problem for me, and as a scientist, I'm very worried about his lack of belief in science. Is climate change real? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Do you think that uh, they're going to be taking steps backwards and uh, uh, pushing deeper down, digging and entrenching themselves further in fossil fuel extraction? Uh, you know, I, I honestly don't know. I just hope not. I hope people like look at the data and make a, a rational, um, you know, and, and thorough decision. Did you know that Donald Trump is the only first world country leader to not believe in climate change? Yeah, I did. Do you think that there might be a lot of pressure, though, that uh, could push him one way or the other? I should hope so. I should hope so. But I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> well, thank you for your answers. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be a jagoff. Show us your taxes. Question. Is Donald Trump a jagoff? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> should he show us his taxes? Yes, absolutely. Everybody else has to show their taxes. Why shouldn't he? Do you think it's an issue that uh, people are saying he stands to make a lot of money as president? Yeah, because poor guy doesn't have enough zillions already. <sighs> yes. Should he have divested and put all of his uh, business interests in a blind trust? Blind trust. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. He's such a hypocrite. We're uh, in trouble. We're in trouble? We're in trouble. <laughs> well, thanks for being out here today. Thank you. Tell me what brought you out here today. Oh, what, could, what didn't? What couldn't? It's, well, I watched the news. Humanity should be our race. Love should be our religion. That's beautiful. Tell me about it. Since 1979. <laughs> uh, f having been such an active activist all these years, uh, are you optimistic as to where we are now, or is this a scary time? Wake up call for America. Wake up call for America. Well, th this is th this is showing the re those who stand with with Trump that they're making a big mistake. That's the purpose of this march. You're not going to do anything with Trump. He's an asshole. Is there a silver lining to this? It's gotten a lot of people motivated. That it's silver lining. You're seeing the silver lining right here and in 600 cities across America and hundreds around the world. I've been corresponding with a, with a friend in Germany all day who went to the marches over there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. No, no pussy hat today? Nah, I didn't. Knitting's just not my thing. Gotcha. Thank you very much. White silence is violence. Hey, Martin Luther King has a very similar quote. Uh, that to be passive is to be as bad as being violent. Tell me a little bit about people sitting back, people accepting this as the status quo. 100 million people not even voting. I think if we don't stand up for equality, if we don't decide that everyone's equal and we speak out for it, then we'll never have true equality. And I think it's important for such a great nation as ours, we should have that. Well, thank you for not being silent today. All right, thank you. It's very important to protect Mother Earth. I agree. Tell me about Mother Earth and why we need to take this seriously. Because we have global warming. We have icebergs that are, are no longer icebergs. They're cracking. So we really do need to take care of our environment or we won't be here. Why should we care about the diversity of species, clean air, clean water, when we can make a quick buck now? because it's always making a quick buck and then we all suffer afterwards. 
Uh, is it wrong to, for, for future generations to sell them out this way? Pardon me? Is it wrong for future generations to sell them out this way? No, it's not. My grandchildren, it's very important for my grandchildren to be able to live a good life and enjoy this earth. With clean air and water. With clean air and water. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> hey, tell me about your hat today. Well, the Pink Pussy Project, it, it's uh, to represent women's rights and the women's movement that we have to keep on fighting and keep on trying. I knitted nine hats and four went down to D.C. with a girlfriend of mine and the other five are here. Got to keep going. Thank you so much for knitting all those hats. Well, thank you. Uh, I wish I could have done more. Uh, do you feel like women are taking back the word pussy? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, yes. I mean, we never, we never lost the word. Okay. <laughs> Donald just tried to make We're, his we own. Really never That's all. The word. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, this is live stream in Pittsburgh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it going, guys. Not my demagogue, pissed pussy, nit. Racism, no. Misogyny, no. Lying, no. Bullying, no. Xenophobia, no. Treason, no. It's time to dream, think, see, act beyond prison. With all that, I was going to say criminal justice. Girls just want to have fun. Demental human rights. Uh, tell me about girls just wanting to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. And it's not been a good week for that. Uh, what's that? Tell me about your hat. It's uh, the pussy hat. Did you make it yourself? Yes, I did. How did you find out about it? Internet. Sorry? On the internet. Thank you. I get all my news. Thank you. <laughs> hey, why are Republicans and conservatives so obsessed with women's uteruses? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm here, because it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not their body. Do you think things would be different if Congress was all women? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> Less Viagra commercials, more fa pl uh, family planning commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what, you, what brought you guys out here today? Is it live stream Pittsburgh? Oh, okay. Hi. What brought us out? Um, we're really really upset about the changes that are going to be coming with this presidency and it's really inspiring to see that this many people in the city care about those same issues too and I think it's less about um, party politics and just more about human decency so um, that's why we're here a bipartisan march I hope thank you very much Thanks. so come here come here what does your sign say what does your sign say let me see just show me the sign Thou shalt not mess with women's reproductive rights. Fallopians, 121. I remember that one. Keep, keep your tiny hands off my... It's a pussy cat. <laughs> Why are conservatives so obsessed with reproductive rights? And uh, This is not an issue that they should be fighting. Uh, given that... <laughs> Exactly, and given the overarching goal of uh, ending abortions, don't you think family planning might be something that they should be getting behind? Hey, you know what? If you're not going to care for the person from birth till death, they don't care about them once they're born. They don't ever take care of them once they're born. That, that needs to end. Why the obsession with the fetus and the complete disregard of the actual baby? Amen. Absolutely. And what happened to Roe versus Wade? I thought we solved this in the 70s. I thought we were done with this. Why do we have to be here again? I guess they're still fighting it, but people are still fighting back. Amen. They, thank you for being here and making all of this visible. Did you make that hat yourself? Uh, no, but uh, I'm here joining all many women who have the pussycat ears on. Tell me about the Pussy Project. I don't know about the Pussy Project. Oh, that's what, where all this came from, the pussy hat. So, yeah, so all these women have, have been knitting and having, and what I think is fabulous is there's a lot of elderly women who can't march with us, who marched in the 60s, who marched in the 70s. They can't march with us today, but they've been knitting from their nursing homes and knitting from wherever they are and getting that out. So we're going to see these hats all over Washington. I've got friends in London who are marching today. I've got friends in Tokyo who are marching today. The world, world is marching with us, and we're all mad. <laughs> no one's happy about Donald Trump or the thugs he's bringing into office. Hillary Clinton won by almost 3 million votes. Yeah, absolutely. However, almost 100 million people didn't vote at all. What are your thoughts on that? Do you know I really wish they'd stood up? I wish they'd be here today. I, wish, I hope that in four years they're so disgusted with what's happened that they'll be there with us again. What do you think about the idea that silence is similar to violence? Amen to that. And white silence is equivalent to violence. We've got to stand up for everyone. For too long there's been white privilege and it's not fair.
criminal justice, the environment, education. Uh, w what concerns you most about this election going forward, these next four years? You know, uh, where, 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 where's your heart? What brought you here today? What worries you? Hi, there's so many things that worry me about the hate rhetoric that's going on right now. Clearly today I'm holding a reproductive rights sign, but my friends are holding um, hate doesn't make America great. The walls, the immigration, the, we're being divisive instead of inclusive. My relatives came from Sweden and Ireland. I wasn't born here. You know, I mean, I was born here myself, but my relatives weren't born here. We all came from some place, unless you're Native American. This divisiveness, this wall, all of, these, all of these people have their own reason for being here, and this is what democracy looks like. We're standing together. I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. I see that your mouth is closed by money, but can you tell me a little bit about this? Is this money in politics? It's, it's corruption. It's basically everything that he's doing. It's cronyism and capitalism merging together. It's, quite frankly, I'm really disappointed in the cabinet that he's chosen, the words he chooses in his tweets. He is acting like he does not represent the half of America that didn't vote for him. Like, there's, we're more than half of this country. And we didn't vote for him, but he's acting like we don't exist. And we do. We're here. We're still citizens. I'm not one of the people saying he's not my president. He is my president. And I want him to act like it. Speaking of acting like your president, do you think it was a bad decision to take the CEO of ExxonMobil and place him as the Secretary of State? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do think it's a bad idea because I think that there's conflicts of interest. I think all the walls between keeping money and conflict of interest in what you're, the main job that the cabinet is supposed to do is represent the people, not make money for themselves or their companies. Like that's, like their number one job is us, not their corporate profits or their investors. Before Jimmy Carter was sworn in, he sold his peanut farm so that there wouldn't be any conflict of interest. What do you think about Trump's refusal to put all of his business interests in a blind trust? <laughs> well, I think it's a huge problem. Thank you for uh, your get up here today and for coming out. Hey, no problem. Thanks for talking. Sure. Let's see. Trump wants us silent. Well, we're not silent today, are we? No, we sure, certainly are not. There you are. Tell me about feminists and that they have balls. I'm not a soundbite guy, sorry. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about women rising up, women being here in solidarity and coming together strong? Let me see your sign. Standing together, we are stronger than any steel bridge. Pittsburgh, girls just want to have fun, duh, men, tall, right. So I'm here because I believe that it's my American right and privilege to be able to protest. And I'm an educator, and I believe that I'm teaching right now why I'm doing this. Betsy DeVos, thoughts? Uh, I, I can't even start on that one. It's upsetting. Well, thank you for being out here today. Can I see your sign too? We will not be dragged quietly back to the 1950s. There was a video going around of Donald Trump during the election of him saying, I can't stand when dinner's not ready for me when I get home. <laughs> thoughts, on that, that thoughts on that 1950s mentality, thoughts on equality, thoughts on women's rights. I think this covers it all because when, when Trump talks about making America great again, what I think about is, is leave it to Beaver and leave it to Beaver looked fine on screen, but in reality it wasn't. This covers every possible problem. It means race relations and domestic violence and, and women's rights and, and immigrant, everything. And it's just, a, it's not where we want to be. We've moved past that and, and I don't want us to be pushed back. Speaking of being pushed back and having gotten past that, will we still be marching in 20 years? Will our daughters have to be marching? Yep, absolutely. As long as they don't have the same rights when they're born. Absolutely. Where'd you get your hat from? It was made by this young lady over here. She made a whole bunch of them. How many hats did you make? Uh, about 25. What are these hats? Why did you make them? What is this movement? Um, this is the Pussy Hat Project, and um, it's a, you know an anti-Trump project to um, some of the things that he said. Um, and so, yeah, so I just made them for my friends that were marching. We gave a bunch out, and so anybody who wants to wear one can, you know. How many did you say you made? I think I made about 25 of them. Is this part of the theme that pussies grab back? Yes, it's taking the, it's taking the word back, right? Thank you very much.
hey, I saw your sign from uh, back there. I, re I really liked it. Well, Trump seems to have uh, ran a campaign on uh, being anti-immigration, on deporting millions of people. Tell me a little bit about this sign and what it means. Um, well, this is by Shepard Ferry, and so it just means kind of inclusion for everyone, um, to respect everyone and to, you know, still be an individual and just love each other and, you know. Shepard, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that. What is that? Shepard Ferry is the artist, and so um, he did this as a Kickstarter, and so they were going to um, have a lot in D.C., so you could also download and print and share this for free. Uh, tell me about inclusion, about what America means in respect to immigration, in respect to other cultures, in respect to diversity. I mean, we are all different, so we, I feel like we should all respect each other. It's all that we have is each other. Instead of tearing each other down, why not support each other and try and come up with um, solutions to our problems instead of just making more? Is this encouraging for you to see all these people coming out here doing just that? Oh, definitely. This is amazing. This is the best thing ever. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jews for Justice! Hi, guys. Tell me a little bit about Jews for Justice um, and Jewish principles, religious principles of inclusion, of peace, of love, of respect. Um, if either of you are, uh, you know, can speak to that. <laughs> I don't th we didn't exactly come here pre prepared to be spokespeople, but um, uh, I think that Jews understand that when anyone is at risk, that all of us can be at risk, and that we have a responsibility to look out for each other. We can't just do that passively. There's a saying, Sedek, Sedek, Chirdof. Justice, justice shall you pursue. Justice is not something that happens. You have to go out and seek it fight for it, work for it, um, and we may never see, we're not going to see it in our lifetimes. I don't think anyone will ever see a perfectly just world, but uh, just because the work is bigger than you doesn't mean you have the right to turn away. So that's why we're here today as proud Jews marching for women's rights, human rights, the rights of all Americans, Muslims, immigrants, LGBTQ Americans, uh, black Americans, everybody. Well, having not been prepared to be a spokesperson, you did one heck of a job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's say one more question. Uh, Trump, uh, at least during the uh, election, hinted at the idea that perhaps we would mark Muslims with some kind of label, uh, you know, so that we would know who they were, so that we could identify them. Uh, does that strike a, a sore note or you know a, a chord with you? When I hear Trump say that there's going to be a registry for Muslims or ways to identify Muslims. Uh, I hear that and I know that it can happen, even in a nation full of people who are uh, full of peace and goodwill. And I don't think there's an easy or obvious way to stop it. I think we're going to have to work hard and fight hard to make sure that that vision of the future doesn't come to pass. And for that, we need a better vision. And I hope we can all work to find one. That was great. It, um, I understand there was a division. There was some uh, tug and pull in the Jewish community in respect to uh, supporting Trump. Uh, you had a lot of uh, Orthodox, very religious people who liked his stance on Israel and were able to look past a lot of other issues. But it was uh, more in the conservative and reform communities that seemed to have pushed him away, uh, to have considered him a pariah. Tell me, just if you can speak to that a little bit, uh, why, are, why would the more religious Jews um, seem more inclined to support his presidency? So I think that it's important to remember context, which is that after African Americans, Jews voted are the second least likely group of Americans to have voted for Trump. So what you're talking about are a small percentage of the community and um, there is overwhelming opposition to Trump in the Jewish community. There is a small minority of Jews who do like his um, uh, stance on Israel and other uh, issues and really believe that he will keep them safe. And I think that a lot of support for Trump is driven by fear. I think Jews, like everyone else, understand what it means to be afraid. And some people respond to fear by uh, elevating hate. And uh, Jews are no more exempt from that than anybody else. But again, I think that um, it's important to remember that Jews came out against Trump a second most of any group in the country. So framing it as why did so many Orthodox Jews support Trump is a little bit misleading, right? You know, why is it like vastly smaller numbers than any other major voting bloc? Because Jews are human beings too. And lastly, can you give me that justice, justice, justice quote again? 
Sure. Uh, uh, the saying is, Tzedek, Tzedek Chirdof, justice, justice, shall you pursue? Justice ain't going to come to you. You have to go to it. Thank you very much. You got it. Oh, what is this for? Stream Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. You got it. Should have been Bernie. <laughs> Tell me about it. I uh, just feel that he would have been a better, represent re better representation of what the American people want. I mean, we want real change. We want real change. We want health care to be a right for all. We want affordable college tuition. And it's like I've been telling people, you don't have to be a woman to be here today to march for women's rights. Would Bernie Sanders have beaten Donald Trump? Bernie Sanders would have crushed Donald Trump in a landslide. Bernie Sanders, like I said, Bernie Sanders is what the American people wanted. We don't want hate, we don't want fear, we don't want misogyny, we want real change. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Hey, health over wealth. Health so over wealth, Right yes. now, the Secretary of State-elect Rex Tillerson, a lot of big uh, oil deals, yes. uh, a lot of money to be made in the short term. Tell me a little bit about health over wealth. Well, you know, when I heard the, the inauguration speech yesterday, and we were talking, hearing all about getting getting wealthy but not a whole lot about people's health and how to take care of that it, it inspired me to come up with this idea it's good they say we're sitting in the united states domestically over a hundred trillion dollars worth of fossil fuel interest should we leave it in the ground uh... It, it's it's not a matter of whether we should leave it in the ground it's a matter of what else that could be done and and this is what should be done um, you, you need, you need, sure, you need clean energy, and um, uh, I, I am, I'm involved in that movement, so uh, it's something near to my heart. But it's not that the oil can't be used for something, but it shouldn't be used the way it is. It should be used very sparingly, and we should be looking at how to get enough renewable energy to cover the bulk of our energy needs. Um, do you think environmental rights are connected to human rights? Absolutely, absolutely, and. What's getting lost here is the, the bigger picture of what's going on. Uh, the, the politics is secondary to what's happening on a, on a human scale. Thank you very much. Men of quality do not fear equality. Can you tell me about that, sir? Um, sure. I mean, I'm here for uh, my wife and my mother and for everybody. Are you a man of quality? I like to be a man of quality. That's for you to judge, not for me. Uh, tell me about being here for uh, the women in your life and what this event means for you and for them. Well, I'm for equality for everybody, and I would, uh, you know, and I'm not afraid to say it. Um, going forward, do you think there's a silver lining to Trump's presidency? The fact that we're all out today, the fact that uh, awareness is being raised uh, regarding this issue? Seriously? Well. I have, if I, I have to speak the truth, I do not think he cares what we say, personally, unfortunately. Does it matter whether he cares or not? Can uh, grassroots movements uh, affect change? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Um, as long as, uh, as, long as the, the media doesn't marginalize, uh, marginalize us, I think we'll be fine. Thank you very much. Right. What are you recording for? I live stream in Pittsburgh. Oh, great. Thanks. Women are in charge of their own bodies. <laughs> Climate change is real. Black lives matter. Diversity is celebrated. Kindness is everything. Love Trump's hate. Thank you very much for that song. Um, absolutely. Anything to build on it? Oh my God, no. Did you make the sign yourself? I did. It's a good sign, thank you. Thank you. You're out of your element, Donnie. Does he belong in the White House? Let me see that side. Absolutely not. <laughs> Does he know what he's doing? Absolutely not. <laughs> did you watch any of the inauguration yesterday? I didn't. I didn't want to. I wanted to spend my day like doing something productive and be with my child and just tune that motherfucker out. <laughs> there was a moment yesterday where he was signing some early bills. And the culture, uh, as the president, is to pass the pen off to somebody after you sign. He didn't know that he was supposed to do that, and someone had to tell him. Do you think that's symbolic of his entire presidency? Not at all. Nope. <laughs> Call me off guard. Sorry. It's good. Hey, tell me about the hat you're wearing today. Oh, uh, this hat is in solidarity with the Women's March. 
Okay, tell me, where, how'd you get it? Where, who gave it to you? Who gave it to me? Um, it's a pink pussy hat in uh, solidarity with, uh, or against the statement that he can just grab anyone's pussy. Do pussies grab back? Uh, apparently they do. 25,000 of them. Thank you. Is that how many are out here today? What was that? 25,000 people are out here that's today? That's what they said. It doesn't feel like that many, but that's what they said. What did you think of Bill Peduto's speech? Uh, good, and I think he's right. I think Pittsburgh uh, will pull together, and Pittsburgh's already making the changes like for the environment and for uh, the rights of people, so I think we will be fine. Thank you very much. 2.9 million votes, almost 3 million votes. Uh, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. More people who came out to vote voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump. However, almost 100 million people didn't vote at all. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, your feelings regarding that? I, I don't know. I, I was a school teacher and I really tried to make my students responsible citizens, but I guess we'll have to do more. Do you feel like it may have been a, uh, Trump's presidency may have been the result of somewhat of a failure of education nationwide? Maybe, I don't know. I hope not. Did you make the hat you're wearing today? A college friend of mine made it for me. Is she here today? No, she's handicapped. That was nice. How many did she make? She only made mine. Oh, that, that's a nice gift. Okay, thank you. I ask because yours looks original. It looks different. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glitter, because I like to glitter. Glitter on the pussy hat. That's right. <laughs> that's important. Yes. Can I see your sign? Women's rights are human rights. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I think that Trump tends to put women in a totally different category from people in general. And that's very unfortunate because he's discriminating against women in this country, among many other groups. Do you think that this is actually going to be a step backwards for the country or the fact that so many people are pushing back, it could actually have a silver lining? I'm not so encouraged about a silver lining at this point. I really think it's a step back from the con for the country. And I don't know that we'll ever regain what he has already managed to destroy. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. OK. If you cut off my reproductive choice, can I cut off yours? I think that's an important question. Can you tell me a little bit about that question? Well, this is a very important question. Um, First, is that question being asked by a nasty woman? <laughs> it is being asked by a nasty woman. Um, this is a very important uh, deal right now that Donald Trump's president, so I guess we'll see what the changes are, and hopefully this remains a um, unchanged. <laughs> so it's a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and now a Republican executive branch. Uh, Conservatives in this country traditionally have been wanting to cut back on reproductive rights. Where does that come from? Why are people so interested in people's uteruses? Well, I think it has to do with um, people don't want to kill babies in the sense, and it's all people's ideologies are different. And, you know, you kind of have to look at both sides. And um, it's definitely, definitely an iffy subject. And you can see both sides, but I think that it's someone's personal choice that has nothing to do with anyone else, so um, people need to mind their own business, basically. Are we living under a patriarchy? Um, I would say so. If men were the ones that gave birth to children, that bear children, would laws be different? I would say so, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, can I see your sign? We are all in the same boat. The climate is changing, why aren't we? So uh, Donald Trump uh, placed uh, Rex Tillerson, he's now the Secretary of State elect, he's the former CEO of uh, ExxonMobil. Um, he uh, has expressed that we're sitting on over 100 trillion worth of fossil fuel interests. Uh, should we leave it in the ground? Should we put future generations interests before short term profits? Yes, absolutely we should. Can you tell me a little bit about the priorities of the incoming administration and uh, why we need to focus on the environment, why it's important to have clean air, water, diversity of species? I mean, I, I think it's, it's virtually self-explanatory, um, and I certainly intend to have children and grandchildren, and I'd, I care for their health now.
I, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's morally justifiable to hand off something worse than what we got. Uh, what do you think about the conservative mentality that uh, money now is very important? We'll figure out a way to handle this in the future when it comes to cleaning up the environment, um, you know, dealing with the loss of diversity of species, but we shouldn't give up jobs and uh, benefits to the economy. I think that's just the easy answer, and it's kicking, kicking down the road, finding a real solution to anything. Um, are, are you concerned go, the, in these next four years, do you think the Donald Trump uh, administration and uh, Republican-controlled House, Republican-controlled Congress could do a lot of damage to our, our national environmental interests? Absolutely they could, and I think many of them intend to. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out. Thank you for your sign. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, sir, can you tell me what is not normal? What is not normal about Donald Trump's presidency? That's, what, that's what's not normal. Not normal is a president coming to office after losing by almost three million votes. That's never happened before. Um, a president installing his cabinet, every, whom, every, whom, every nominee of which is against the mission of the cabinet of the department he's, he or she is running. That's not normal. It's not normal to have a president who who's refuses to give up his business interests, creating immense you know, conflicts of interest. And also having his family advise him and coming in to a totally nepotistic situation. None of that is normal. We can't get it and we don't want to have that normalized and allow that to become acceptable. Can you speak to the paradox of the Republican Party, a conservative base, making a person who seems to be so at odds with all of their core family values as their president? No. I don't know how he did that. He ran on a populist platform. He took a lot of Bernie Sanders in his speeches. He took a lot of Bernie Sanders' ideas about bringing jobs back, improving health care. Of course, what he's doing, actually, what he's already begun to do is to, is to destroy the health care system that we have. Um, so he just lied constantly to the Republican base. Even, even inconsistently? Totally inconsistently. We would lie about something he said that was televised, so for which there were videotapes of him saying it. Um, and he did it over and over again, constantly. For some, some, for some reason, this appealed to a lot of people. He seems to be at odds with the traditional conservative candidate. You know, he's not exactly a family guy. Uh, he's not exactly a pure, uh, an ideological purist. Um, the appeal was just, uh, they were looking for a populist. They weren't necessarily looking for a conservative. Yeah. They were looking for, well, I think there was also an undercurrent of racism in, throughout the whole thing. So we used that, the dog whistle, racist, so people knew that this is what he, what he meant about racism. He, he came out and said things like, well, I'm going to make the inner city so wonderful. Remember that? And it's, for, you know, it's going to be great for black people and stuff. He didn't, that wasn't to attract black votes. That was to allow white voters who, to vote for him and think they weren't being racist. Given that this was a populist election, do you think Bernie Sanders uh, would have been a better match uh, against Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton? Much better. He would have won. I'm sure he would have won. All those people who were, wanted the populist vision that Trump was, the phony things he was saying, they would have all voted for Sanders. Plus, well, Hillary was maligned in many ways over decades, but also she had a lot of baggage. The whole Goldman Sachs thing, that was a, I mean, there was a lot of phony stuff, like the email thing. I think that was completely phony. Benghazi, totally phony scandal. But... She was with Goldman Sachs. Now, Trump <laughs> shunned that, right? He said, oh, I'm going to drain the swamp, no more Goldman Sachs. And then he just brought, he brought in like four, four or five Goldman Sachs people already into his, into his inner circle. So it's complete bullshit. Mnuchin, some, some are saying that uh, he plans to drain the swamp directly into his cabinet. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a good one. So are you just uh, doing a video for, you know, like a... Um, Freelance or We're what? We're live right now. This is Stream Pittsburgh. Uh, do you think um, Trump's going to end up disappointing his base that uh, cheered him on and vo ultimately voted for him? Yes. It's already happening. His approval rating is already lower than, in, than any other recent president, and like half of Obama's approval rating. Already low, much lower than at the election. And that's only two months, and he hasn't even been president yet. So, yes. Do you think he has any chance of uh, winning a second term? Um, and does he have a chance of finishing his first four years? I'm afraid he does have a chance of even winning a second term, but top priority for him is going to be winning the next election. 
And the way to do that is voter suppression. And he's already acted in the Justice Department to cancel lawsuits they were filing against states like Texas to stop their voter suppression laws that they passed. So the Justice Department is already pulling away from that. So that's going to be the pro top priority for him. Speaking of Goldman Sachs and the Democratic Party, do you think they're somewhat at fault, the DNC, for running such a corporatist candidate, for being uh, you know, so in bed with Wall Street, so in bed with fossil fuel interests, and not, not uh, distinguishing themselves enough from the Republican Party? Definitely. I mean, I, Bill Clinton was Republican light, and so was Hillary. She was, um, she was a war hawk also. So there were a lot of things not to like about Hillary. And, uh, but she was the establishment candidate. It was very hard for Sanders to win that. I mean, they also worked against him with various devious methods of scheduling debates during, you know, super important boarding events on Saturday and Friday nights and stuff like that. They tried to minimize the impact he could have. And so they, they, were, they were working against him in devious ways, but also I think she was the establishment candidate. She was the one who was um, the, the, the expected kind of nominee for so long that the Democrats just wanted her. What's your general feeling right now? Are you uh, pessimistic? Are you nervous? Are you hopeful? Where are you right now in terms of everything that's happening? I'm really pessimistic and really worried about everything. From denial of science to uh, the whole climate change issue is being going to be completely ignored. Uh, in science in general, I mean, it's the whole, and the whole idea of just the false worldview that it's going to be presented. There's going to, I mean, it's building a, this, narr the narrative is just, just completely false. I mean, just factually false. And so he's going to go in the labor, the Department of Labor Statistics, a Bureau of Labor Statistics and stuff. They're, we can't trust anything's going to come out of the administration now. Those are used to be, you know, nonpartisan, like the Congressional Budget Office and the these labor statistics and all these things were the, the science, the science departments, and NOAA and and NASA doing this impartial science. Now we can't trust any of that anymore, and it's going to manipulate these lies and build up a false narrative about how great his presidency is. What would you say to? Uh a conservative sitting at home watching this right now who heard the inauguration speech yesterday where he said, I'm giving the government back to the people, I'm giving it back to you. What would you say to that conservative who believes that? Who believe that? Who believe what Donald Trump had to say, that, this is, that his administration is going to be an effort to restore America to the people. It's complete nonsense and it's completely inconsistent with everything he's done since the election. All the people he put into cabinet positions are all mostly billionaires. So the, I, I mentioned you know, the primary goal directive is to win the f next election. Second directive is to make the rich richer. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to cut spending, lower taxes on the rich, um, make life worse for everybody else. Massive tax cuts, bigger than we've ever seen before, even bigger than George Bush. Trickle down won't start working now? No way. It's just going to be much worse, much worse. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you.